Oh, that's interesting. WDAD Radio. Inspired WSM to create the Grand Ole Opry. Due to street widening, it relocated and became WLAC in 1926. Deford Bailey is uh, an Uncle Dave Macon. Uncle Dave Macon had stuff in that um, Ap Appalachian yeah, museum we went to. I got Bessie Smith, yeah, and Deford Bailey was in the uh, Grand Ole Opry, the, the first African American. Right, you're coming up. Corner of Church Street and 8th, I think this is. Um, can't get across over there, there's a lot of building going on. But on the corner in that uh, car park, parking lot across the way, that was uh, where the Hotel Tulane stood. First national recording studio, Castle Studios, was created on the second, well, First floor UK, second floor America. <laughs> um, Castle Studios was uh, created there. Hank Williams recorded just about everything he did there. Uh, amongst others, Kitty Wells, Webb P.S. And when the Everly Brothers left Knoxville after Don Everly graduated from school, they moved to Madison, just north uh, northeast of downtown Nashville. Uh, so they were closer to Nashville to try their luck and they managed to get a recording deal with Columbia Records. And on 9th of November 1955 recorded four songs here and it took them 20 minutes. The band that was uh, supporting them had just come off tour and by all accounts we're in no mood to perfect uh, the arrangements and in 20 minutes four songs had been cut two were released as uh, the first single uh, keep a loving me and the sun keep shining but when that bombed the second single was cancelled and as was their recording contract but they recorded it here at the castle studios at the hotel tulane where that car park is now. Don Evelyn managed to get one of his songs, Thou Shall Not Steal, recorded by Kitty Wells, and that was a uh, top 20 on the country charts. So that may have uh, helped the Evelys get a, that contract with Columbia, however brief it was. Yes, that's the main one that goes yeah. down. Look at that building there. I know. Looks like uh, they, they looks like they're shunting in blocks. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So you big game of Jenga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, after the contract with Columbia was cancelled, the Everly's basically uh, hang around Nashville, hang around the Ryman, trying to get a break standing behind the Ryman in the alleyway there with countless other budding wannabes hoping to give their songs to somebody So following the unsuccessful, the Everly's unsuccessful stint with Columbia Records they, they spent the next year still piddling around, uh, just muddling around in Nashville they were, about, they were about to give it up actually, to pack it in to call it a day and, and somebody introduced them to the music publisher Wesley Rose. Wesley Rose was impressed by, by the Everleys and um, sent a demo up to Archie Blair in New York. Archie Blair had heard them previously and wasn't impressed but this time he was and he signed them to his Cadence Records uh, label and in March 57, the Everly Brothers were to make the first recording um, for the label. It was a song by Boodloo and Felice Bryan, the husband and wife songwriting team, who uh, couldn't manage to give Bye Bye Love to anybody, but uh, the Everly Brothers, of course, at the time, perhaps would have uh, recorded anything, actually, just uh, to be back with a recording contract on a label. But as it turned out, it was a very wise decision and Bye Bye Love was a massive hit after 
uh, Don Evely used the guitar introduction he'd used on one of the demos, uh, Give Me a Future. And the song, of course, was a, an international hit and uh, the rest is history. Well, that first recording was done at the, what was called the, the Trafco building here on McGavock Street in Nashville. It was the Television, Radio and Film Commission building. And it sat across the road from where I am here. In that car park there, that's where the building stood. Of course, Elvis had also been here the year before for his rec first recordings with RCA Records on January 10th. Heartbreak Hotel was recorded here that day along with uh, I Got A Woman, which was the first song he recorded, and Money Honey, and he was also back here the next day. Uh, I Encounter On You When I Was The One was recorded at those, that second session. Um, Elvis was himself was back here on April 14th for his second and final recording session at this building, when he just managed to record the one song, I Want You, I Need You, I Love You. There's photos of him inside the studio where he also received his gold disc for Harpeg Hotel. And there was a photo of taken outside here um, as he was getting in a taxi, uh, leaving the studio that day. There are no photos of Elvis here on January 10th or 11th. Pictures of the Everly Brothers also very scarce. They recorded here in uh, March of 57. And they were also back here in August following the success of Bye Bye Love where they uh, recorded the even more successful Wake Up Little Susie, another Bryant's song. And again, uh, in, they're heavily sold on the introduction by uh, Don Everly using a bit of a bow diddly riff on his acoustic, uh, his Gibson acoustic. And that was another big hit. The Everly Brothers were called back in to record an album, their first album, which was just called the Everly Brothers. Following the recording of those songs, uh, the RCA would have built their own studio, which they opened in late October, early November 57. Studio B, as it uh, came to be known. RCA Studio B is just back up that way. And it's just about half a mile on music, what's now called Music Row. It's incredible, uh, incredible, and you think there's no no musical marker here, you think that the place at Heartbreak Hotel was recorded and Bye Bye Love and Wake Up Little Susie could constitute some sort of uh, recognition here. We've come up just a, a little ways from McGavock Street where the Trafco building was. A bit of Music Square, Music Square West and Roy Acuff Drive here for, uh, this is where Studio B is, RCA Studio B. Now this opened in October of 1957 and Don Gibson was one of the, if not the first to record here. Um, Sea of Heartbreak and Oh Lonesome Me were recorded at that time. The Everly's next recording session 4K dance took place here at RCA Victor in March of 58 um, when All I Have To Do Is Dream was recorded of course which was uh, massive number one in Britain and America and Elvis of course he recorded for the first time here a couple of months later in June of 58 uh, June 10th when he was on leave from his stint in the army when he recorded five songs here which I've uh, done on a previous video so the historic marker here says RCA Records established a recording studio in this building in November of 1957 with local offices run by guitarist producer Chet Atkins 
Now, I think the Studio B booklet that I bought actually says it was the end of October 57 that it opened. But November would make more sense because the Everleys were still recording down in the Trafco building on McGavock Street. Uh, on the uh, 3rd of November they recorded a handful of songs for, the, for, for their first album there. So it would make sense to be November rather than the end of October. Anyway, its success led to a larger studio known as Studio A, built next door in 1964. So of course this actual RCA studio didn't become known as Studio B until that studio opened in 64. Studio B recorded numerous hits by Elvis Presley, the Everly Brothers, Roy Orbison, Don Gibson, Charlie Pride, Jim Reeves, Dolly Parton and many others, along with the Bradley Studios which is just up past Chan there, up to the junction, turn right and it's a, a, a few hundred yards down. Um, so along with that Bradley Studio, Studio B is known for developing the Nashville sound, the smoother sound. Of course the, the Nashville musicians at the time, there was a, a clutch of them that uh, played on most sessions. Uh, uh, Harold Bradley, Ray Edenton, Buddy Harmon, Lightning Chance. Uh, and so many more that I can't remember. Other musicians come to me as I'm uh, walking around. Uh, other musicians, of course, on the Nashville Sound with Boots Randolph on sax, how could I forget him? Um, Floyd Kramer on piano, how could I forget him? Charlie McCoy, um, Grady Martin, Buddy Harmon, did I say Buddy Harmon? I might say Buddy Harmon. David Briggs, um, yeah, so many more that I've uh, obviously forgotten as well. So this, this is the main RCA studio that opened in 64, right next to Studio B there, just on the corner. Uh, slightly interesting with this is that, uh, although Elv Elvis never actually recorded uh, at using these studios he preferred uh, Studio B for the time for the sessions he did here in Nashville but the Everly Brothers in Studio B they recorded so many of their hits from All I Have To Do Is Dream through to 1962 or you know the majority of their top 10 hits at that time were recorded Studio B with the exception of uh, Let It Be Me which was recorded up in New York at the end of 59 but the Everly's um, last album before they split up was the only album with the only songs they recorded at the main RCA studios here. That was in 1972 for the album uh, wonderfully titled Pass the Chicken and Listen. That was recorded at the, the main studios here. Just a little interesting fact to show how prolific Studio B was in 1960. In the space of eight days, on the Friday the 18th of March 1960, the Everly Brothers were here and uh, recorded Kathy's Clown, their biggest international hit, um, written by Don Everly, well Don and Phil, but uh, at the time it was credited, but I think it's since credited now just to Don on his own. But they recorded that year on the Friday 18th of March, two days later Elvis was here for his first recording session after leaving the army and he, record, he recorded the million selling Stuck On You here as well as uh, A Mess Of Blues which was also a big top 10 hit in, in Britain. The following Thursday the Everly Brothers were back here again and recorded So Sad which was another top 10 hit in Britain and the UK as, as part of uh, the double A side with Lucille. Then on the Saturday Roy Orbison was here and recorded Only the Lonely so again another massive massive hit number one in Britain number two in America and it, all in the space of eight days incredible uh, run of hits recorded here just in the space of eight days in Oct on October 30th Elvis was back here recording his um, his Hand in Mine Gospel LP as well as Surrender which was a 
Once again, repeating myself, uh, again, number one on both sides of the Atlantic for Elvis with that. And two days later on the 1st of November, the Everleys were here recording Ebony Eyes. Top 10 hit uh, as a double A side with Walk Right Back. And also the song that really, really started, marked the end of their hit making time really. Uh, Temptation, they, they were determined to do it and it's, it's a great song and uh, it was number one in Britain although it missed the top 20, just missed out on the top 20 in the US which was uh, after the run of hits the Everleys had had here in America that was seen as quite a failure actually and it, it led to the eventual split of the Everly brothers with their manager Wesley Rose and the split from Wesley Rose also meant they lost the uh, access to the the publishing uh, the Wesley Rose was also the music publisher and the Every Brothers themselves were signed as songwriters so they couldn't even record their own songs and they lost the songs of Boodloo and Philly Spryant which had provided so many hits for them in the late 50s and early 60s and they, their career chart wise never really recovered from that so that was brief history of the Everleys in Nashville